Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the FX Trading Festival of Webinars. We're going to take a look at a live trading room. In fact, apologies, it says range bars, but it's a live trading room uh, today at 10 a.m. UK time. Thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Chris, and uh, together with Nanette, we're going to take a look at this uh, system called HARP that we've been trading. In fact, that's the focus of today. It's actually translating uh, all those webinars before, those five webinars on Fibonacci and range and Haikarashi and putting it into applying it into real life looking at real life trading charts for this hour and we're going to do the same on wednesday thursday this week uh, tomorrow at uh, 1 p.m 12 or noon uk time and uh, thursday the same time and then next week yet again the same schedule tuesday wednesday thursday so looking forward to that now let's dive into a quick introduction about who we are my name is uh, Chris, Nanette is here as well. Both of us uh, give webinars at Avon Markets and provide analysis of, at FX Street. And Nanette has a thread, very famous at Forex Factory, for instance. And uh, we together trade with Avon Markets, the best MT4 broker in UK of 2015. Before we dive into actual the, the charts, be aware that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered higher risk. It may not be suitable for everyone. Therefore, please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. And by continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer, and you're also aware of the risk involved when trading for exchange and other financial markets. Alrighty. No more PowerPoint for today because we are going to focus on actual charts. So let me pull over this, this euro dollar. Now, here we're looking at the analysis template that we're using for our trading. And as you can see, at this moment, the euro dollar has a downtrend. And why is that? Well, the moving averages clearly indicate the blue one is a shorter one, that it's below the red one. So we're definitely in a downtrend, but we're using Heikinashi candles as well for a, for a trend identification. And you can see that at this moment, the Heikinashi candles are in fact blue. So although there is a downtrend at the moment, there's currently a retracement going on. And preferably, we focus on uh, the pairs where these two are aligned, because that's when you get the biggest trending movement. Take a look at yesterday, for instance, on the euro dollar, when this turned red, and we had a uh, you know, good downtrend here on the, the slope uh, indicator as well. When everything is aligned, you get a good movement, and you get a good continuation. And we had a, a, did a serious follow through to the downside about 120 pips. So that's how we do the trend analysis. We're looking for identifying a couple of pairs that stick out that day. Because let's face it, we have a lot of currencies on a particular trading day. And you know there's just a lot of things that, that go on. And you can easily cherry pick the ones that have a good trend. And you can do that very quickly by using this template. That's the beauty of uh, our system. And it just shows you neatly fast where is the, the potential for trend continuation that day? Now, the euro dollar could have that later today, but at this moment, as you can see, also, if we look at the oscillator, you know, it's turning into a gray area here. So it just hasn't, doesn't have those conditions as yet. Uh, it did it yesterday, it doesn't have today. It could turn later on because it's heading back to the pivot point. Besides these, uh, these great Hakanashi candles, you can see very accurate pivot points. Uh, Neda, maybe you want to share more information about these pivot points? Uh, sure, Chris. Uh, uh, just uh, <clears throat> I need a sound check confirmation. Yeah, so, yeah I hear you loud and clear. Yeah, excellent. So basically, those are uh, custom uh, pivot points, and uh, we uh, call them uh, accurate, accurate pivot points, which stands for accurate pivot points. Uh, because well, uh, London pivot points are usually the most accurate ones. So th those are not uh, pivot points in the sense uh, like Camarilla or Woody pivot points or Marimed. These are classic pivot points. But out of all classic pivot points indi indicators, these are the most accurate ones. And we basically use them only when London open. So for example, in the settings, uh, part of indicator, you only need to put the time on of your London Open. And as Chris is showing you, it will show you 
uh, pivot points from London Open to London Open. So these are current EQ pivot points. And if you go back to the past, into the, to your left, you will see historical pivot points, which are shown by these lines. So these pivot points are showing you both historical pivot points, which were for previous day, uh, for previous week, and of course, for today. So uh, you can only, for example, take a look at these Hank and Ashley camels. You can see how those pivot points are accurate. So even, even, but just by using those pivot points, uh, of course, in our course, which we'll do for HARP, uh, we will also show you how to use pivot points by themselves. They're very, very powerful. For example, if uh, uh, resistance one, R1, or uh, support one, S1, is broken, there is 75% of chance that the price will proceed to M4 or um, uh, M4 below support. And there is a big chance that if the price proceeds above M4 or below M4, it will touch R2. There is 80% of chance if for current day price touches R3 or uh, S3, it will reject. Uh, to the downside so you are even just by trading pivot points without any other things of course considering hard you are very 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 good to to go and that is why EQ pivot points are far the best pivot points in forex market i i really think so yeah absolutely i totally agree i mean it's just the pivot points themselves are just a you know, a very, very important uh, element of support and resistance throughout intraday trading and uh, even intraweek trading, in fact. I mean, if you look at uh, the importance of, for instance, R3, R2, and finding maybe uh, trend continuation trade when intraday makes a retracement. And in combination with these high conditions, you can really find great setups. So, for instance, here, the pound USD, one hour chart here, we can scan a few of these uh, analysis templates. Let me maybe first actually explain to you the fact that we're only looking at analysis templates this uh, gives us the opportunity to you know find the currency pairs that we want to focus on for let's for let's say the next hour or two and that can change throughout the day i'm not you know but you know that you have a kind of a focus because that's because otherwise there are potentially uh 10 pairs easily that are are you know many traders trade and there could be even up to 25 if you really take a look at all the exotics and stuff like that so which one do you focus on at that particular point it's good to to make that distinction so the analysis template does that and quickly then after that soon we'll dive into the entry templates that we use and we'll show you two different uh, templates in fact uh, for two different types of trading one for short term one for for long term and shows a different kind of uh, uh, entry approach uh, than only looking at candlesticks because we're going to look at range bars. That's why we had the webinar on Sunday. So just to put it in perspective here for you, we got analysis template. We'll do that for a while, and then we're going to dive into uh, the entry two entry templates. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now the pound USD has things good, well set up. Why? Because look, we got red Hakunashi bars plus we have the short moving average below the long term moving average. So yeah, we had a nice move down to the S1, and you can see how accurately, as Ned also was saying, price bounces off that pivot point. It's a great take profit as well um, when looking at this particular template. So you had a good um, signal here when the things were lined up uh, with the red red here on uh, a few hours ago, in fact. I want to be careful as well. Here you can see that there was just a crossover and a red candle as well. When the crossovers just occur, you got to be careful, especially when London, of course, just closes. That's something that we'll explain to you when uh, in the HARP method that there are other things to consider regarding uh, timing of the day. Uh, that's something to be cautious of. Okay, but you can see London opened here, we got everything aligned, and we already had a good downside. In fact, a drop of some more than 50 pips. So this is something to consider. The pound dollar we can put on our list. For potential shorts dollar yen uh personally i am in the short in fact i talked about it in the admiral markets webinar this morning i'm already in that short and i'm up a pip a few pips from from the analysis template point of view it's still a bit early because you can see we do have haikanashi candles 
right? Clearly to the downside. So from that point of view, I'm not early. From the move average point of view, perhaps yes. So it depends how aggressive you want to be. We recommend with beginning traders that they really wait for the full kind of alignment. If you are, however, a bit more experienced trader, you can use the Heiken Ashi candles just as is without the moving averages because the Heiken Ashi candles are already powerful. And if you have that experience, then it, you'll be able to, to pinpoint the, the moments when uh, you know when to use them and won't dive into trades that are a bit too early. Moving averages are good for beginning intermediate traders because they, they keep you on the right side of the market. And in this case, it would be too early. Um, if you're more experienced, then uh, perhaps you're in the short with me on this dollar yen. So for the moment, let's focus on the pound. Let's take a look at the odd USD. Uh, you can see it's breaking below the S1 and it's uh, approaching the, the M1. So uh, Aussie definitely aligned as well. Um, Kiwi 2 and uh, dollar cat to the upside as well. Uh, but you know the oscillators. One thing is to note that the oscillators are not aligned on all of them. In fact, all right. So that's something to be maybe cautious of the overall market. Let's take a look at the euro yen. This is definitely a strong downtrend, and they're talking about the euro yen as well in the Admiral Markets webinar. Pound yen too, but the crossover just happened. So looks like the euro yen is the winner at the moment. And um, but in any case, the pound and the Aussie and the Kiwi and the dollar cat are options as well. Euro odd not, pound odd, perhaps to the upside, in fact. All right, so that's that's a quick look at, let's say, eight currency pairs. Um, I don't think we need to, I think you get the, the drift, you can you get the point. It's, it's, it's a quick way of spotting the currencies that have the most potential there regarding the trend. Now that maybe you wanna, um, what do you think is the the best to focus on today? I mean, looking at these analysis templates, do you have a preference or? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, from the analysis uh, point of template, we should be focusing. Of course, um, you can you can uh, put a euro dollar on chart, and uh, now we are talking about yeah, that is euro dollar. So I will talk about euro dollar, and uh, I'll later I will show you uh, setup uh, which I have prepared for this live trading room, and it involves in New Zealand dollar, and that will be our um, Camarilla MACD, so our old school proven also Camarilla MACD. So I will show you how uh, what I will do today when trading New Zealand dollar. Where I okay. will enter, where we should put stops, targets, and so on. Uh, at this point, from our analysis template on Euro Dollar, Keikereshi, uh, we can easily identify that the moving average is touching uh, 1251 line. So at this point, we can see that TB, uh, TMA slope is basically turned green. So we might ex expect a probable retracement. So if that happens, now we don't know if it, if it will or it will not happen. But if it will, if it happens, then we need to be ready to find short entries around M3 1250. Indeed. So Blue Haken Ashi indicate uh, that uh, current momentum is to the upside. Now, uh, overall trend is to the down, to the south, because we see lower highs and lower lows and also red EMA is above blue EMA that indicates that the overall trend is down but we need always to focus on the retracements because if you trade with a trend you need to wait for retracement so you need to wait for a pullback align sellers in the past and we now moment and we can easily identify that by looking at this chart and also there is an ema confluence with m3 so i will be ready to watch for 12 50 51 for short opportunities okay so that is what i'm also focused on if we get the price at that particular level now uh, also, Chris, you can uh, uh, a little bit um, zoom uh, out so I can see M3 and all other, or you can move the chart to your down downside so I can see uh, support one, M, yes, and indeed. So, for example, if the price rejects and hits support one, which stands at 11.08, 
and if it breaks it by three points then i will definitely look that the price move towards uh next uh mill pivot point uh, which is basically uh i i can see it here. yeah it's 1076 and probably 1054 but only 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 if uh, we get a break of support one without a break of that level and without a i can say a clear break of the level we cannot really think that the price will go down now there is a possibility that uh, that euro dollar bounces on retracement from 1251 but also if we see that heikenashi turns red that means that uh, probably retracement is over and that we are heading toward uh, 10 11 63 again at the break and the break of 11 63 will aim for the next support to the downside so it's uh, actually s1 so we need to watch for those candlesticks we need to watch for the colors of the candlesticks and uh, 1008 will be 1108 will be hit only if uh, if uh, uh, middle pivot point breaks but in that case uh, our haken ashi will be red so because now it's not red we are not looking to short it at this point we are looking for a bounce towards 1250 then maybe we can see another rejection with Haken Ashian go down of course we can go down we can uh, bounce from this level towards uh, pre-mentioned targets so that is what we are what I'm also focused on that is about hard template and later I will show you New Zealand dollar Camarilla MACD yeah that's a good point because we're going to actually discuss in this trading room two things harp uh, and Camarilla come back D indeed Two systems, two different systems, two uh, you know different systems, but both very powerful. And one thing I wanted to add, by the way, before we take a look at those entry templates, which we'll do in a second. Um, but one thing I still wanted to mention actually is this left upper corner. I know it's a bit difficult to see, perhaps, but it says today's range bar pips for your dollar is nine point five, and that information it's it's uh, actually a custom designed indicator for us to know what is the volatility of the market to know what is the best range bar setting that we can use for our trading is that the best way to formalize it do you think uh, Nana, did i yes definitely definitely uh you you did it well so uh, our custom indicator shows you the exact uh, pip uh, uh count for a range bar setting so instead of focusing on fixed range bar settings as 99 percent of traders do we have developed a custom indicator which tells you the proper range of each market so for example euro dollar is 9.5 pips uh, pound dollar will be a different settings uh, dollar yen will be different so every pair has its own settings so we should not uh, you see, pound dollar is 9.9, we, we, and we say it's 10, because we always round it out. Dollar yen is 9.3, it's 9. Australian dollar is 8.1, so it's 8, right? So you will always know the proper uh, pip count for, for range bars. You see, pound yen is 70.1, so it's actually 17 pips, right? So every market has its own pip range bar count. So we cannot say it's same for every pair, as uh, 99 of systems tell you okay they tell you use five use ten it, it's impossible to trade only with five ten because uh, market change volatility change and range bars as an ultimate representation of market volatility will tell you the the exact pip count and that is what we made here exactly it's a it's a it's a great advantage to have and now we're going to switch from from harp analysis to uh, to different entry templates let's start with the swing one first and then we can go take a look at the scalp uh, templates because I grouped them together. It's it's easier just to have them grouped together. It takes two seconds and you switch to the different template. Then you have it all bundled together. So bear with me as we do that. Alrighty. So uh, I got a couple of pairs already ready here: the Aussie, the pound, the euro, dollar, and, and dollar yen. Um, and uh, well, we know that euro dollar is making the retracement, but let's take a look at the euro dollar first of all and take a look. These are range bars. All right. So. Um, and basically, what we're seeing, of course, and witnessing 
is a down channel. You can see that the slope of this, this channel is, is confirming that. And you know, the slope is really a, a, just a, a nice extra. It, it shows the angle of this channel that is down. And it really just gives an extra confirmation. Obviously, we knew already from the analysis that, it's, that it is a downtrend. Furthermore, we can see that those range bars are red too, right? And look, when you can see the um, potential here, when it gets into the top quarter, we're looking for basically in our swing trades for price to get into that top uh, quarter in a downtrend or bottom quarter in an uptrend. Let me explain that maybe a bit better. What do I mean with top and bottom quarter? You look at the channel you see, for instance, here, and you can see that the channel right, has five lines. We're looking for price to be in this zone for shorts and this zone for longs. Okay, yeah, just I, I just want to tell to tell you uh, <clears throat> to tell everyone that we use uh, the term buffer zone. So in between those two lines to the upside and two lines to the downside, it's a buffer zone. And Chris will explain you how we actually take the entries. There it is, the red and the down. Now, when we're looking, obviously, when we're in a downtrend, we're not looking for longs in, in the in the lower buffer zone, right? That's that's counter trend. I mean, that's perhaps for some ones for a lot of experience we're definitely looking for the for the trend continuation it's easier to trade so when you get the signal basically here with the red candles or even here right the stop loss is is right above there um so it should be safe and you can see the continuation of the downside all right even this morning it hit the lower part of the buffer zone and as soon as that turns red uh, an entry is possible because range bars are only showing price action. So let's see, when was this? That was actually, uh, that was actually yesterday, All right? So um, wait, let me, my template is actually not up to date. I didn't have the time yet because of the Admiral Markets webinar. Maybe Nenad can show uh, his uh, template. But if we look at uh, quickly at the other pairs, you can see you know, how we're looking for the range bar entries um, as they switch in the buffer zones. Neda, maybe you want to share your uh, screen at the moment? <clears throat> yeah, ju just a moment. Let yeah. me open it and I will share my screen. So it's Euro dollar, right? Yeah. Okay, here we have Euro dollar. So let me, let me, let me show you my screen. Wait, let okay. me stop. I need to stop uh, it one second. Mm -hmm. I think that you can see my screen now at this point. So basically, here we have a potential entry, okay? Because we are in the buffer zone, uh, we also have our uh, stochastic cross to the downside. But the thing is, because we have seen our analysis template, okay, I personally would love to see it a little bit more in here between, let's say, uh, 12. 30 or 12.50, somewhere like that. Because when we open our analysis template, I will use now uh, pivot points for this. So these are pivot points, you see. So we need to have at least here, in between pivot points and entry. Because we have identified by previous KK National template uh, that basically here, there could be a potential entry. Now, guys, the power of the harm, okay, the power of the harm is that there also could be an entry here okay so that is what we need to decide basically whether we will show it here because now candles are turning red this is down we also see uh, um, stochastic okay now we see our cci histogram okay so you see the price is rejecting this region so for scalpers this is also great but let's say for intraday or a swing perspective now we are talking about swing perspective right not about scalping I would really want to see it here in between this this buffer zone here. So let's say at least towards pivot point, okay? And then we are ready to go. Now I'm not saying that this cannot reject, okay? That this cannot reject from this point, okay? But from from let's say intraday swing perspective, at least somewhere between here or, or pivot point or in between pivot and entry, okay? So yeah. you can I, think, I agree with you. That I think that uh, you know, it, at this moment the analysis template is saying it's a, it's a mix of a trend, so it makes sense 
to to focus on the ones that are trending indeed. And this one is just not. We need to wait for the, the euro dollar to make that retracement and then turn yeah, around. Yeah, I would I would do I would do it like that. Yeah. Only if there is let's say a little bit more volatility because now we don't see much volatility. The price is actually retracing. It's trying to break twelve zero zero. So on bigger volatility, probably we could also enter here and try to scalp swing it. Okay, I, we will also explain on the course how to scalp swing. It's, it's in between uh, scalp and intraday position. So scalp swing. So uh, you know, it's it's about your analysis. That is why we included the analysis step. But we also can see. Uh, a trend line here with KK Nash, it's easy to, to point the trend line here. So actually on bigger volatility, it could probably bounce down, giving you a nice scalp swing trade. But from swing uh, perspective, if you want to trade a little bit, you know, slower and uh, maybe more careful, that is why you need to apply, uh, you need to always watch for uh, our uh, analysis template. And, uh, maybe I can show uh, the... Uh... Uh, yeah, you can you can do it. I will, okay. I will I will stop sharing the screen. So can, yeah, you can do it. I can show them. Uh, I can show you pound, dollar, yen, and and, and Aussie, and then uh, and, and then, then I I would I would love to show our traders New Zealand dollar setup for today. Free pips for today. But I hope that we will not get an entry before I show them the entry. So. Uh, yeah, New Zealand dollar can really make the entry with stop loss and target. So it's pretty easy to set up. I mean, obviously, uh, with Harp, you get the fact that you get the template. So all you really have to do is go to the, uh, the template and put it on the chart. I mean, these are range bars. So what we have actually is a, a, a easy system of setting up those range bars with this, uh, this indicator. And uh, we have then the range bars in front of us with the correct setting that we want because we know that from the analysis template remember we know the the setting we want from that so that's very simple now when we look at the the pound usd we know that it's in the downtrend but we're also seeing quite a mixture of divergence here with the bottoms breaking to new lows but the pound dollar a slope here the harp slope the indicator here the cci2 showing some some um Divergence. So that's something that would, you know, be careful of. We got blue candles as well at the moment, and we're not really at the top zone, are we, at the moment? So we need a bit of retracement on the pound dollar. That's something we can keep an eye on as it retraces higher and then turns around back down, uh, maybe in the uh, 155.50 zone, 155.25. Sorry. All right. So this one is not there quite yet. Let's take a look at the uh, the Aussie USD. We know that the Aussie USD needs a count of 80 so i type 80 here and i open the chart and i add the uh the swing template all right and you can take a look at the audio is the and here too it's made a good fall i had a very good setup uh, earlier today in fact um i also saw that in the admin markets website <laughs> uh, webinar by coincidence the fact that it hit the long term moving average uh, on the analysis template and made it turn around it was a good fall of about 40 pips and, uh, but now it's actually showing a blue candle. So this too has already made its downside. So you know that's the thing with these webinars, you can't make a perfect timing. Let's take a look at dollar yen as well. And the simple way of adding the harp, like that. All righty, let's see what's going on. We got a downtrend at this moment. Now we know that the analysis template is in fact not ready yet, all right, from a moving average point of view. Um, but uh, some of us are in that trade and doing well. You can see there's good reason to stay in that trade because the candles remain red and uh, we've got good power to the downside. The slope is below this four level. That's showing a lot of strength. So from that point of view, it's good. Uh, basically, we do have depending on how this range bar ends, there could be another uh, setup, in fact. Now, of course, the analysis template is not aligned, so it would be one that's a bit on the early side. But the point is that we did go back to the top of the, uh, you know, the, the buffer zone, as you can see here. And if this closes red, then it made a retrace and it continues. Now, the only thing is that the analysis template is not really aligned. So let's see if we can find one that 
is yeah. aligned. Yeah, and uh, adding to that, we also look, doing... I think that we said that the Urien was in a nice trend. So let me open the Urien. And it's simply go to the minute chart and add the um, template. Sorry, getting confused. And uh, let's see, we need 12 pips because our special indicator is saying 11.6. All right, so we can take a look at this year again. Let me add this template. We can take a look at the harp swing trades potentials for today on this year again. And you can see that this is one that, as I already said before, one of the better ones that is aligned. Now, why are we looking for this alignment? It's because we want to make sure that our head is focused on the right direction. With all these ups and downs, with all these price movements, with all these various uh, signals and trends within trends, it's quite easy to get confused in the woods. It's like going into a forest without any compass. It's difficult to find the exit. You actually be often enough find, uh, you know, when you look at documentaries, these often people who get lost make circles, in fact. Very easy to make circles. Now, Forex traders, unfortunately, we have the same problem if we, if we don't have a very strong and good compass. And what we want with Harp is to deliver that compass so that uh, traders have a very good sense of direction and have also a blueprint to follow, a map to follow from how to get from A to B, from the start of the trade, from the entry of the trade, or even before that, to, to a successful exit. And what we noticed is, you know, the trade trading in general is often so so difficult to copy a system. That's why we wanted clear distinctions and clear um, setups and clear analysis. That's why also we made it separate so that everything is very distinctive, and we think that this is something that is uh, duplicable is, is the word I'm looking for for many traders. It also allows actually different ways of trading so that you can find the method that suits you as a trader the best. Furthermore, we realize that trading is more than, than trading and analysis. It's a lot to do with risk management and trading psychology. So what we want to offer is an entire support network for traders and offer a robust method, in fact, of tackling the trading. That's what HARP is about. And when I say HARP, it's also including CAMACD system, right? It just HARP is, is our word for uh, various methods that we use. And you can choose which one is best for you, all right? It's like cherry picking in a candy store. You got, uh, you can, you know, you got great stuff in front of you and you can choose the one that suits you the best. That's basically what we're offering here uh, in the next two and a half weeks where we have a special going on. In fact, I'll talk about that in, in just a second. First of all, this euro yen. Basically, what we got is strong trend, and uh, we got price going back into that buffer zone. We don't have any divergence, so what we're looking for now is perhaps a bit more retracement. Let's see. I mean, that's up to price if it does that or not. But ultimately, we're looking for a red bar. And uh, it could be ready for that. Then it's ready for that short. It could be ready for that short very soon. Not at the moment, though, as you can see. But this is one that is getting there, and it's pretty close. It has things aligned, as you can see. And uh, it had great trades in the past as well. You can see uh, here the turn from blue to red. Now, if you go back to the past, you don't want to look at the, the, the channel, by the way, because that is a channel that's adaptive. Okay, So you want to look at the channel now. In the past, it it's, doesn't have that value. But you, you can see how simple analysis of the trend and a wait for a pullback and then the switch from blue to red is, in fact, already, as it is, a great way of trading. And you can see just maybe already very visually downside correction. First indication of weakness, short it right there, right at that candle when it closes, and you get the trend continuation. Boom, bam, like that. And that's, of course, great swing trades. That's why we call this the harp swing, because this trade has been lasting now um, for, for a while, as you can see. And if you manage to hang in there, could, could trade 
for up to 200 pips at the moment. So great potential. Now, you know, we'll talk about exits in, in a later stage as well. For the moment, I want to focus on entries. But the exits, depending on how you trade or manage it, you could have up to that number, right? Maybe still be in it, in fact. So it's a great way of swing trading. Chris, can, so you, please, idea can you please show us the euro dollar now at this point? With the harp swing. Uh, maybe I can dive into the harp scalp a bit as well together with Nenet, and then um, we'll take a look at the Cam MACD and the entry there on the Kiwi. All right, so just give me a second where when it uh, loads the scalping template. With the scalping template, you're going to see a lot more potential setups. So you, you're going to have to have uh, more filters in place. So you have to look at very cautiously at the pivot points. Uh, you want to take one or two, but you don't want to over trade. You don't want to be too trigger happy here uh, because that could be a bit um, you know, risky because in that case, you could have too many setups. As you can see, the great thing about the scalping template is that they're your arrows, first of all, plus alerts. So you know you have the ability to easily monitor what's going on, and you'll get warnings when there's a, a potential setup. So that's the first great benefit. It's just that it's more automated. Uh, and obviously, that's needed when you're scalping because it's more intensive and it's more, you know, it's more up to uh, up to date. Nenet was trying to to talk. Apparently, I did not hear you, Nenet. Let me see if I can hear you now. Uh, okay, uh, I was just trying to say that uh, you can switch just showing uh, to show us euro dollar, and that was uh, what I, what I was talking about. Euro dollar is good to get uh, ten or twelve pips, because as I was explaining, uh, our harp uh, swing template. Show us, showed us the entry, and uh, you see uh, that uh, price has been rejecting. Yeah, actually, obviously, I need to share my screen now just to show uh, traders uh, possible. And I have taken that entry. I will show them now. Okay, so uh, this is basically what I did. I was trying to grab this scalp trade, and you can see from the point I entered here. And uh, I'm good now for some uh, 12 pips. So, guys, this is how you can also scalp with with our harp swing. So, effectively, okay, you can see it here. A very clear entry, live account, uh, live lot size, and scalp to scalp swing. Now I will manage the trade, but this is actually how you can also scalp without the usage of our analysis template that is what i was talking about okay so chris you may continue thank you yeah good point sorry about that i apparently muted the uh my my, my uh, sound so i didn't hear you there yeah i mean great great entry there i mean from a swing perspective that's why we have two templates um swing perspective it was not in that downtrend but if you look at the scalping template we did have a signal very clearly, an arrow above this, and you can see that uh, the entry after that candle close is now uh, up a few pips, and uh, well, depending on where you where you took it, it could be up of anywhere from five to uh, to perhaps fifteen, right? Yeah, just try to share the screen. I I think oh, yeah. that we can see the screen. I yeah, think. Sorry about that. No worries. Forgot about that. Indeed, there. I'm talking about this arrow, in fact. And you can see that uh, that trade is on its way. So swing was, you know, not there, but the scalping, yes, it was. And Ned, Ned had already actually talked about that, that uh, you know, swing is, is is not ready and needs a bit of a bigger retracement, but the scalping is, and uh, that's on its way. Now, you can actually see the arrows here, and it's just a great way of entering multiple times in and out on one pair throughout one day. Um, and obviously, you want to be careful of the ones where you could get a bit of a bigger retracement. Uh, often enough, if you look at the yellow line here, maybe you see it, this yellow line here, the, the better ones generally tend to be here for short or here for, for up, right? Because then you have a bit more space for the trend continuation. But because it is scalp, uh, typically even most signals will give uh, some good pips uh, as a continuation. So let's take a, maybe a look at one or two other pairs. 
Um, I mean, if you have any questions or comments, by the way, feel free to send an email as well. Let me check if we got an email. In the meantime, I will write down very quickly the email address that you can reach us on. Unfortunately, we don't have a chat system, but you can send a email to here and we will take a look at that. All right, so that's, take your time there if you want. And uh, let's take a look at the different pair, pound USD. You can see how it's riding along here, some several signals. I was looking at the, the dollar yen, but that's not, you know, didn't get a, a short signal as yet. Now, these long signals, as I said, you want to be careful with uh, uh, trading swings right in front of the top of that channel, obviously. But if you look at the most of these blue signals, they actually do get a follow through of several bars, in fact. But as I said, the top half, you want to be careful because it's, it's bumping into resistance. The bottom half has more space, right? So from that point of view, this template is also very nicely showing those wide open spaces. Uh, even for scalps, and of course also for swings, even for scalps, you can see at what point maybe can you translate the scalp into perhaps an intraday trading. And then it talks about that more often as well. Maybe let me just show you the Aussie still. Right, and here too, we need a bit of a pullback. Maybe I can open the Eurian quickly. That's the one actually where I was most interested in. So let me do that right now. If you are interested, by the way, in HARP, I'll show you the Euro Yen in a second. It's loading. If you are interested in HARP, take a look at our website, EliteCuracy.com. Click on HARP in the right upper corner, and you'll get a, inf a video with some info from myself uh, about it. And if you want to hear more about it, if you are interested by any chance, just write your name and your email, click on send, and you'll get access uh, to more information uh, about HARP, the second video that explains more details about the rules uh, and, and performance as well and other stuff. So take a look at that if you're interested. Now back to the Euro Yen. Uh, oh, I forgot actually to click on. Always difficult to do multitasking here. Let me open the Euro Yen and I'll pass it then to Nenet and he'll take a look at the Kiwi. All right, so it's simple ABC in fact for setting up the swing as well. What you want to do is uh, get to find out what the ideal range bar is setting. Now that's quickly, that's just an indicator. And it says 11.6, that didn't change from the last time. So we can do 12. So we have the range bar setting. And now the only thing we need to do is add a template. And that's also a question of one click. And we can see that scalping is uh, actually showing a scalping entry, but uh, it's right at the channel. So we'd probably rather wait for 135 retracement here, considering the um, the dance that we've already had. Um, but it shows the scalping potential, and if the first one was taken, the trade is already up eight pips. All right, so this signal right here, that trade is actually a scalping trade that is on its way as we speak, um, and it happened. Let me check. I guess about an hour ago. And uh, same thing for this morning. In fact, the Euro Yen here too uh, was a good entry and got very good follow through too. Good entries earlier this morning as well on the Euro Yen. So that's how you can do it using the scalping. You get very good entries sometimes, very good continuations, um, depending on the space that you can see. In this case, I probably wouldn't have targeted for all the way down here, probably would have aimed for the bottom of this channel for. Um, you know, for a potential bounce, because you never know, it could have been a, a support level. But uh, if you did use a trail stop, you could have even, you know, locked in some some more pips. At this moment, the trade is scalping trade is on its way, and uh, you can see how these red signals, red arrows, nicely giving various results here. This good downside. This is a good downside here too. This one not right. Obviously, this one didn't work. But where was where were these arrows? Yeah, this one was indeed in the bottom half. So it's always a bit riskier. In this case, you get a bit of consolidation and you get the retracement. Nothing is perfect. Um, I, hard I, I need to add, I need to add uh, concerning our uh, scalping template that you always should take entries uh, 
close to this uh, thick, uh, let's say, red line, when, when the thick red line is aligned with our EMAs. So basically, uh, the first, the, the best entries are always at the thick red line aligned with EMAs. That we, we will cover that with rules. And also, you need to watch always for our EQ pivot points. Because even if the template is giving you a signal, you don't want to go short or long at the support or resistance. That is why you always need to pay attention to our analysis template. From scalping perspective, it can be good because, guys, every single candle, where which you can see here, is 12 pips. So basically, you know, scalping is 5 pips, 10 pips, 15 pips, and even 12 pips. And you will always, almost always get a good scalp. But if you want to turn that scalp into a scalp swing, for example, then you need to watch for acupivot pivot points and these channels. We will cover all that in course. But at this point, Chris is plenty well. For scalping perspective, these are great entries. But why wouldn't we try to turn scalps into scalp swings? And instead of making 12 or 15 pips, maybe we can make 25 pips out of it. That is what we will cover. And you can see now Euro dollar is already 20 pips in profit. Now I will move my uh, stop loss to plus 15 and enjoy free run. Yeah, Nana, maybe uh, um, you want to take it over right away and show your New Zealand dollar? Uh, Nana, are you, are you there? OK, yeah, yeah, I'm there. I'm there. Yeah. So basically, uh, I will show you now. I just needed to manage my euro dollar. As I said, uh, 15 pips have been locked in. And uh, uh, I'm very happy that we did it live. Yeah, OK, 15 pips was euro dollar scalp trade. Now, uh, bonus trade, of course, this will be, uh, I can say, a swing. So you you need to be prepared for uh, patience and for bigger pip count. So from this perspective, if we open for our template, we can see that uh, New Zealand dollar is in downtrend. Okay, guys, this is downtrend. Also, downtrend is confirmed at this point because you can see that MACD is trying. This is below zero line, and even on one hour. It shows you that it is well below zero line. Now, because MACD is below zero line, but this blue line is above red line, this is a sign of retracement. So we need to wait for retracement. We need to see where the retracement will uh, go and try to find a confluence point. Okay, from the analysis perspective, we can also place an inner trend line here. So this is inner trend line. Uh, by definition, inner trend line is an X support or resistance line which had been broken in the past. So at this point here, okay, while we were seeing chart here, this was a support line. But because this was broken, that is now considered a inner an inner trend line. So we have inner trend line. We have H3. We have also daily pivot point here. These are Camarilla pivot points, okay. And now we need to find confluence points and uh, possible entries. Now, because we are in heavy downtrend and we have uh, on one hour time frame and on nice downtrend on four hour time frame, we need to see where we can find entries. But we need to use conservative stops because this is Fed action. Okay, Fed action will always place, uh, I can say, strong levels of price action. In this example, this is strong level of resistance at this point. Okay, these weeks indicate sellers. So definitely for this uh, swing trade, we need to place stops around 64.60. Okay, that is for sure. Okay, so stops should be placed at that point. Now, because we are too low at this time, 
and we have multiple confluence here, I would wait for a candle uh, for the price to reach at least 6350 region, okay, 6340.50 region, and all the way to next confluence point. So our buffer zone, buffer zone for entry should be uh, in between 6345.50 to 63.60, okay? Because we are having a strong confluence of 38.2 inner trend line, H3, and I can say daily pivot is there, but th this is our confluence zone. Clearly identified by previous range, uh, historical sellers at this spot, spot, and also I expect now moment sellers to appear. So we need to use bigger stop loss, but this is very uh, important now. It doesn't matter if you use 100 pip stop or 20 pip stop because the risk is always the same. You should trade 0.5% uh, per trade. So your risk of this trade is 0.5%. Calculate your, uh, your margin, calculate your equity, your, your balance, and then try to see what will be a proper lot size for a 100 pip stop loss and uh, and uh, your entry. So because you will be taking entries here between this region and your stop loss is here, you need to use 0.5% per risk, okay? It's always the same, guys. We are teaching you to trade properly, not to gamble. You can always gamble, but try to trade as professional, like big banks do, right? So this is your buffer zone, this will be your stop loss, and your target should be <coughs> at least should be this region here l4 so it's 6260 so it's like 100 pips and final target is l5 okay final target is 6215 so your final target is there but uh, as i always say once you are in profit try to use profit stop it's a form of trailing stop where you move your stop loss manually so uh, when uh, your trade breaks L3, that will be the time to use your profit stop. Manage it as you want. You can scale out. You can put your stop loss to break even. You can close whatever you want. But the thing is, when it's close to L3 and it breaks L3, that is the time when you should manage your trade. Now, of course, providing that we get an entry. And as I say, our entry should be I would say between 63.50 and 63.60, somewhere at that region. Your stop loss is here, your target is here. Now, if we take a look at weekly perspective, or we cannot, we cannot see, maybe we should see it on monthly. <coughs> there is a scope for the price also to reach 61.50. So if some big movement happens, Okay, I say big movement, big volatility, and L5 is broken, your target should be 6150. Okay, so for final target for this swing is 6150, final target. But as I say, pay attention to L3 break to manage your trade, then L4, watch how the price will behave here, here, and ultimately, if L5 is broken, there is a very strong support at this point price should go even below 61.50. But of course, that should happen maybe during uh, next week or it, it, it but I, I hope that we can get an entry at least today or tomorrow. And our entry is, as I say, here in between the zone. So this is our live trading room. We showed you Euro dollar scalp entry. Chris showed you how to take Euro yen scalp entries. Now this is your intra-week or intraday, more like an intra-week swing entry, Camarilla Magdi. So write it down, very clear, very precise. Risk is 0 0.5 and let's see if we will get an entry by Camarilla Magdi. Yeah, no, that's great stuff. I, I just want to uh, quickly show that you're yen still, indeed, how that uh, changed. You can see here we sure. didn't keep an eye on it, um, but because we're you know scanning others and we, we're showing the, the the method in total. But as I said, we need this red bar to close this 
red range bar of 12 pips to close. And that's then the signal because we are having that pullback, right? The blue candles here. And we're getting into the uh, into the zone here, as you can see, the buffer zone. So that's that's the thing, in fact. And it was not only a scalp, but then at this point also could have been a swing, depending on what you're looking for and how to trade it. Um, but that could have been the, the entry right here on this red bar and is uh, up now, as you can see, as it moves lower. Well, I guess that's just the, the quick follow-up I wanted to do. Um, Folks, thanks so much for being here. Uh, we really appreciate it. We have a trading room tomorrow again at, uh, let's see, noon UK time. That's 1 p.m. Central uh, European time. And that is, let's see, 7 a.m. Eastern time. So I hope to see you then. Thursday, too, the same time as today. We'll take a look again at uh, the HARP CAMACD methods, at our method of trading and showing you how we how we trade. We'll take a look at the, the harp analysis the two entry templates and perhaps even the comeback d let's see uh, as well once again if you're interested in knowing more about the harp method in general uh, you can take a look we got a special going on in fact until october the 4th so that's yeah it's about two less than two weeks in fact so if you're interested in at least checking it out then you can do so without any obligation by putting your name and email here in the heart page, okay? Thanks again and happy hunting. Cheers. Cheers, trade safe.